today we're looking at solving quadratic equations via the factoring technique and uh, the first thing we have to work out is can we actually factor the quadratic expression and we first of all look at the discriminant of the equation and uh, the discriminant is represented by a delta it's called equal b squared minus 4ac and if this uh, value is in fact a perfect square or zero we know we can in fact factor it. Okay, so the first idea is work out the discriminant. Then once we've actually worked out that it can be factorable, we have to use a uh, fact that if uh, we have one factor, a times b is actually equal to zero, then either a is equal to zero or b is equal to zero. And we use this fact to actually solve uh, the equation once we've factored it. Okay, so let's look at an example. Okay, can I factor this quadratic? Well, I don't know just offhand, but let's actually just work out what delta is. Now, the first thing we normally do is we, on the side, we work down a is equal to 3, uh, b is equal to minus 1, and c is equal to minus 10. So we, we'll do the same sort of thing if we were trying to use a quadratic equation. So then we work out what delta is. Okay, delta is equal to now b squared minus 4ac. And we put this in and just have a quick look. Um, b squared minus 1 all squared minus 4 times a which is 3 and c which is minus 10 and we can see that's 4 through to 12 120 plus 1 121 okay hallelujah yes it's actually a perfect square 11 squared so we know it is factorable okay now what I'm going to suggest is that um, we always use a cross method to actually factor these and um, if we have a quick look here we're going to now examine the cross method now to factor this via the cross method, first of all, we draw a cross. And then we look at the um, 3x squared, this expression here. Its factors need to go down this side, so we need to actually write, well, we know it's prime, so it's just 3x and x, that's fine. Now, the minus 10, uh, the factors of minus 10 have got to go down on this side, so we can try and work out some. Let's have a look at, uh, now, we also need to work think about that when I multiply along the cross and I, I need to add up the cross has to add up to well negative 1x so I'm going to obviously 5 and 2 I would suspect 5 and 2 let's try 5 and 2 okay now there's a little bit of trial and error here we know that they're multiplying together to give us negative 10 so I know need to make one of these negative so let's have a quick look so we need 5x and 6x are on the cross so if I made that a minus 2 here, the cross would actually be, let's have a quick look, the cross multiplying along each of the arms of the cross. Um, so we'd go 3x times minus 2 would be uh, minus 6x, and then 5 times x plus 5 times x is 5x, and the cross actually equals minus x. And this is what we want. We want the cross to actually equal minus x. Okay, so we now, okay, we are now... In a, we now have, to have the actually the right orientation of the factors on the cross, and to factor it, what we need to do is we just rewrite the factors. We just go across and across. Therefore, we have 3x plus 5 times x minus 2, and that should equal zero. Therefore, the solutions would be whatever makes each of those brackets zero. So the solutions would be. Let's have a look. Solutions x is equal to whatever makes x minus 2 0, which would be 2, and the other one would be 3x plus 5 equals 0. Obviously, that would be uh, minus 5 on 3. Let's leave it as minus 5 on 3. Oops. It's minus 5 on 3. Right. Okay. So let's have a look at another one. Now, this is a simpler one, and uh, a lot of people just factor these by looking at the last number, saying it's positive 6. Okay, what are the factors of positive 6 that add up to negative 5? And we know that would be minus 2 and minus 3. What I'm going to suggest is that we just use the cross method on all of these as well. So we just go like this, uh, x, x, and uh, we know 2 and 3, 2 and 3. We know that have to be negative. You could have tried 6 and 1, but when you look at the cross, let's have a look at the cross. The cross now is uh, multiplying along each, 3 times x is minus 3x, and then we have to add in uh, minus 2 times x, which is just minus 2x, and that obviously is minus 5x. So in fact, 
that's okay. Okay, therefore, we can now say that this quadratic can be factored to x minus 2, reading across the top, x minus 3 across the bottom. That equals 0. Therefore, the solutions would obviously be x is equal to whatever makes the first bracket 0, 2, and 3. That's not too bad. Okay, let's have a look at another one. Okay, this one, we're not too sure whether we can factor it. Uh, let's just check the, the delta. So delta is actually equal to okay, b squared minus 4ac. In this case, it's equal to minus 13 squared minus 4 times 3 times minus 10. 120, one, so it's 169 plus 120. Okay, 189. Okay, so this is actually uh, 17 squared. Okay, so it's a perfect square, so we can in fact factor it. So let's just quickly have a look. Okay, 3x and x, the factors are 3x squared down, okay, the right hand side, and the left hand side are minus 10. Now, we've got to be careful, we want to have minus 13 on the cross. So, well, 5 and 2, that's 15, 16, 17. So we actually need one of them to be negative, so we need to put a minus here. So we have so the cross would be, let's look at the cross, the cross would be uh, 3 times minus 5, so it's minus 15x plus 2x, which is actually equal to minus 13x. Okay, so let's have a look at minus 13x, fantastic. Uh, okay, so it's, yes, okay, good. Okay, so we now, we know that we can factor it, it's actually going to be 3x plus 2 times x minus 5, okay, equals 0, therefore we know the solutions, it would be, uh, okay, x is equal to uh, 5, whatever makes that second bracket 0, and the other one would be 3x plus 2 equals 0, therefore x is equal to, uh, what's that, uh, minus 2 on 3. Okay, this is just a, so this is the su suggestion that we just use a cross method on harder and even simpler ones. Okay, thank you very much for watching.